please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? There has been of late a lot of controversy again concerning the Minecraft YouTubers and streamers. This happens every so often, they get accused of being weird and creepy, many of them get cancelled and disappear into irrelevancy, and a new generation finds its way to the front a few years later. It is with that in mind we go to the current generation, many of whom are under the microscope. Like, why are we leaking this? Like, you are lucky. <laughs> You're lucky that that was the only thing that happened. This is like... This is such a lucky lesson learned. Like, okay, I was underage, drinking. I was already pretty dumb. Probably shouldn't go back to the hotel room with guys alone. Some guy kind of like felt me up a little bit, but nothing happened and then I left. That is a lucky scenario. On March the 9th, Twitch streamer Katie Bugs alleged on her broadcast that she had been sexually assaulted by a significantly older and popular content creator at the beginning of the summer of 2023. Hi, chat. I wanted to talk to you guys about something today. Last year, at the beginning of summer, I was assaulted by a significantly older and popular content creator. Initially, she did not name the person that she claims had done this to her. She claimed that while intoxicated by the creator who was eight years older than her, her ABUSER disguised their non-consensual touching by asking if she was ticklish. This was a big clue. A number of people pointed out that George Not Found, a Minecraft streamer and YouTuber, was known for having a weird tickling kink. So all attention fell on George. George has a sizable following on YouTube, but doesn't really get much in the way of views on the platform, if you ignore the more recent videos where he has responded to the allegations. George initially responded to the allegations by saying, I will be doing a very serious stream later today. This post is just to make clear, I am gathering all the information and evidence to share. I have never and would never break someone's boundaries or A-S-S-A-U-L-T anyone. Bugs did not appreciate this at all, Katie Bugs that is, and on her Twitter posted a statement. We are waiting. For whatever you can, I also have screen recorded everything. I planned on using it to support my case if needed but please share it on my behalf if you like because we both know what happened that's why i can sleep at night without scrambling for screenshots to try and twist that's why you're scared because me and every other creator know the truth and you do too that's something you have to live with yes i was naive but i have room to change to grow up eight years exactly and when i'm your age i'll be 10 times the person you are and you will always be the 27 year old still acting like a child. I'm not scared of you anymore. I've been waiting so long to say this, but you are an effing coward. Goodbye for now. At this point, many people were on Katie Bugs' side. George was flayed, sauté, to the point many of George's tweets don't exist anymore. Although I do believe the number of them were archived at least. On March the 11th, George Not Found released a full response to the allegations. This was a 33 minute Twitch stream, re-uploaded to YouTube as well. He pointed out that the streamer and her group had already been at VidCon, or an after party at it, known for its strict security, and claimed that she and her friends were wearing over 21 wristbands. Now in this there is a slight error, not all of them were, but there was a mislead on age, that is true, and in this Katie Bugs had been drinking as well under the age, legal age that is. I believe this was pointed out by Nick Diorio. In the case of this serious conversation, the George Not Found streams YouTube channel, it's mostly well received, 75 to 25, and the comments, many point out discrepancies. But continuing with the story, he did acknowledge that Katie did have her age in an Instagram bio, although he did not see it at the time. That is what he claims. Katie alleged she answered a question as part of a drinking game where she stated she was 18 and still a virgin. However, George explained he couldn't recall, quote, I just don't remember this happening. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I did not hear it happen. We're not all just sitting down, it's a chaotic environment. I could have been getting a drink. I could have been talking to someone else. I did not know what was said. Katie explained that she and her friends were encouraged to drink, which George believes is phrased in a way to make out that he and his friends were preying on them. George does admit he placed his hand on her waist under her shirt, pointing out this was not sudden and they had gradually gotten more intimate throughout the night. 
and that the furthest they went was George touching the streamer under her shirt while she was still engaging with him the entire time by smiling, laughing and even play fighting. Katie Bugs released a full statement to Twitter and no, she was not happy. This is a very lengthy response because she put out many screenshots and statements and that's where we're going to go next. One, he never got verbal confirmation from me. Two, chose to move to a sexual act on the couch where everyone was hanging out without asking. I don't know how those two facts coexist. How can I consent when there was no question? How can I consent when drunk? I prepared proof on the idea he wouldn't admit to it, that he would deny touching me or being there, but he admitted it, that I was drunk and he touched me in front of everyone, that I never said yes, nor did he ask. Frankly, I think it's effing insane. If you still need more after hearing him admit those two simple facts, then nothing I can say is going to change your mind. But here it is. Addressing the stream. As for the iMessages he showed outside of Insta DMs, all proof was him showing a group chat he wasn't even in, showing messages from my friends, which isn't me. The only message showing a response from me was when we asked about the drinking game we played. That was after. We played it the first night. Why I went back? Because my friends want to, and I went with them everywhere they went that trip. Second night, another reason I was willing to go back was I heard of a different creator who was in the room I wanted to meet, but when I found out they had left an hour earlier, I was already in the Uber. Insta DMs. This goes on for a while. Sorry, folks. But for the sake of transparency, you need to see all of this. As you can see, the messages happened in June of 2023, when she was claiming she was freshly 18. Her birthday is in January, so not freshly 18 in the slightest, but that's just one little inconsistency and we're not going to latch onto it too much. In those DMs, you're just chatting, as people can see. Underneath that, you say, I felt lucky to be talking to a verified account, someone famous, someone I'd followed and watched for a while. To the next page. Again, like he said, at one point he asked for my snap, which he did. But we did not Snapchat much at all because I don't use Snapchat. I haven't since... Around middle school, the most that happened were a few pictures of him with a quesadilla that he sent me and I resorted back to DMs, which didn't last long, because you'd stopped interacting around Paris TwitchCon. She walked into an elevator, we left at the same time. The unmentioned friend. There was a man who was there that I left out. He wasn't there for long, he left early. We cuddled. A lot of the touch was initiated by him, probably not realising it. I mean, he was literally spooning me from my left as I faced Ghosty to my right. A lot of the cuddling he may have felt was personal, but was just me being drunk. Everyone on the couch was doing the same thing, all drunk close together, but I get it, I was drunk. I didn't think cuddling automatically meant it was to turn sexual. I don't know if it was an invitation. I wasn't going to push him off in front of everyone. He took it a step further in front of everyone. Because he assumed things and assumed that he had the right. As a shy person, I could not speak up in front of him and everyone else let alone say yes, even if you wanted to take a step forward sexually, why do it in the open? If you're cautious about consent, why not ask? That's usually the first step, and more importantly, why does everything have, have to get taken a step further, and may I iterate, reiterate, that I was drunk? She could have moved. Yes, I got up and sat in the same spot, getting up to drink more. Mentally, I believe, in a room on a sofa with people on it, you just sit back where you were when you get up. She stayed when her friends left. I didn't make the conscious decision to choose to stay. My friend left throwing up in her hand and I didn't know. So the last three points, may I remind you, are not an invitation to be sexual or that I wanted it. And if he thought I did, he could have asked. Well, he assumed cause your body language. We had just met. Why did he think he knew me so well that he could assume how I felt? This might be where a plot hole has been discovered because you were exchanging messages over DMs after VidCon, which doesn't help your case in the slightest. George had essentially admitted to touching you. This is where many had said, well then, case closed, it's over for George, he's done. Because this was taken to the court of public opinion instead of the police, it was instantaneous, the result felt by George. He was removed from any collaboration with Mr. Beast, which tickled me. He lost sponsorships, and he was tarred and feathered as a S.A. Salter. At this same time, all of those involved with uh, Katie Bugs, including Katie Bugs, had claimed to be quitting the internet for a while. Now, this could be attributed, if you are going to be charitable on this, as them removing themselves from any and all backlash of the more calm and the more extreme. There is going to be some of all. We can't deny that. The same cannot be said for George, though, who ended up making a second statement on this situation. But while that was going on, many creators on Twitter started to look at the story from those screenshots and verbal statements from Katie Bugs via Twitch streams. 
and they pointed out there are a number of allegations that do not line up, even with George doing a rather bad initial response. There is still very much on the internet a listen and believe mentality when it comes to people coming forward with allegations. George's response was not on par with that of Wilbur, whose response was beyond dog shit. It was nowhere near the level of Prince Andrew either. It was just done quite badly. So a follow-up was required to clarify a few things. But the court of public opinion is merciless. And so even if he does clear it all up, he is not going to be believed. Example here, Amesy. On Discord, Katie Bugs had put out another statement at some point. And the part that's been highlighted by Carvos I also don't want victims to feel they have to prove themselves to people to be believed. Now this is a rather fascinating statement because I don't do listen and believe. If you've watched any of the crime videos I've done on this channel, I will never do listen and believe. That's not to say I don't believe you. I am completely indifferent. I've just noticed from your statement and from George's, none of it lines up with each other at all, which has led to, as more time has gone by, to Katie Bugs being accused of being a manipulator. This muddies the waters because if there was any merit to any of this, you really shouldn't be doing it on the internet. If a crime was truly committed, it should go to the police. But then a freshly 18 year old was at a 21 event. Things get very confusing from the offset. YouTuber and also Minecraft streamer and lookalike to Shane Dawson, Dream, put out a statement as well. And he takes the side of George because he believes that from both statements, George is what was much closer to what actually happened. Quote, I think people expressing that someone did not consent to touching or cuddling because they did not verbally speak it is extremely dishonest. You can clearly consent without verbally specifically saying something. Just as you can nod your head to say yes, silence is not consent, but I was there and although I did not know that any sexual touching had taken place, I can say for a matter of fact that their interactions were extremely positive throughout the night and she had many opportunities of separation, even getting up and down off the couch and laying back down with him after the alleged thing took place, and her best friend leaving after what took place and her choosing to stay for hours. No one that was there had anything but positive experiences to share until many months later, and I was shocked to hear anything at all. I agree with George in saying that there is a group of content creators that have very large hatred for me and the Dream Team. I'm not exactly sure why I have some ideas, but it's been going on for over a year now. Multiple of these content creators have spread total lies about me and take any opportunity they can to spread negative rumors. Katie is not one of them to be clear, but she is friends with many of them. And this is even something we discussed in person. Obviously, I can't say for certain that this has anything to do with what she said, but I can assume it had an impact on the lens she viewed George through. He also goes on to point out, Katie was avoidant of clarifying anything to them or defending me and was careful with how she worded things in texts to me about it. It was speculated by everyone that was there that night that it was because she is good friends with the UK group and she didn't want to lose them as friends if she defended me or my character or said anything positive over text. This statement is four pages long. I will link the relevant tweet down below with the images of it. Nick Diorio had actually posted it and of course it was posted to Reddit. His second response, his more recent one from three days ago, I argue is a better response, pointing out inconsistencies and addressing the tweets he put out apologizing to Katie that has since been deleted. Many were worried that he was gonna cuck out to her because of those tweets, mostly because Many now do not believe Katie's statements. There are of course loads that do believe her, but there are enough now that do not believe her that the sway is quite substantial, the swing as it were. Enough so that on his own response video, his like to dislike is a lot more favorable in the like category. The damage though can be safely said to have been done now. What she considered S. Assault is not what many would consider it at all. And because that accusation has been laid at the feet of George, the damage to his career is substantial and significant. Many believing that this is a way of, as Dream put it, attacking those near him. So there is argument there to the theory or lends credence to it. In truth, I consider this an incredibly messy situation. This should have gone to the police if there was any merit to any of it. If any of it constituted a crime being committed, sure, that. Um, I know that Ghosty, the friend of Katie, had addressed the drinking issue and believe that Katie had misspoke. I don't know if there's any truth to that. I really don't because these inconsistencies do not help the situation. When you have one statement, multiple statements from one person making accusations and then contradictions from people meant to back you, it gets really muddy. 